Welcome to the RV Podcast, episode 437, this March 8th, 2023. And on this episode, we're going to talk about secrets from an RV inspector. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the RV Podcast. I'm Mike Wendland, and this is my lifelong traveling companion and my bride, Jennifer. Well, how do you like living in a construction zone? Well, it'll be good when I can put everything in a place because I'm spending way too much time trying to figure <laughs> out where things are. Yeah, things look a little bit uh, discombobulated. Trust me, it's worse in person. <laughs> it's really bad. We are in our uh, new studio, which eventually will be our studio. It's probably a little echoey now, but this is the best we could do. We just moved to our Michigan property uh, that we bought in Western Michigan. We just moved there um, two days ago. We are, it's not quite ready. Uh, we don't have our countertops in. We don't Oh, it's just a mess. There's boxes everywhere. And I spent the weekend trying to get the studio set. This is the best we can do, folks. It'll get better over the next few weeks, I hope, right? It will. And you'll probably hear some noise. Uh, they're still doing some remodeling on this. We've been doing this remodel project for, I think, five weeks. Five months. Five months. Yeah, I'm sorry. Five months. And um, But um, we're here. Uh, we've been living out of the RV most of the time that we've been here so far. Thank goodness for our RV. We are so grateful for our RV that yeah. we've been able to stay in. And uh, it's it's great. If uh, you don't know what we're talking about, if you're new to the podcast, we bought 10 acres on a little private lake uh, that we own, I think, about three quarters of it in uh, western Michigan. And uh, we put in two RV spots. So we have a place for our fifth wheel and for our our uh, our motorhome, our small class C motorhome, uh, but there was a house on the property, and so we remodeled it, and that's where we are. Five months of remodeling, and it's far from done, <laughs> but but we don't have any choice. We're in it. We sold the other house, and here we are. Hey, we had a new sweepstakes to announce. We do, and this listen up, all of you who are pet lovers and uh, have a pet, because there's something new out there that you're going to want to put your name in for to try to win. We're going to give this away in about two weeks. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's from our friends Waggle, who make the Waggle Pet Monitor, which monitors humidity and heat, and it'll tell you if your RV has moved. It's got a geofencing thing, and if you leave your pet in there, if you lose power, it'll let you know that. If it gets too hot in there to let you know that but it now also comes with a wi-fi pet camera so not only can you check on the heat and the humidity in there but you can check on and actually look through an app on your smartphone at your pet so real peace of mind it's a 370 dollars value for all this and we're giving it away just go to our sweepstakes page at rvlifestyle.com slash sweepstakes and you'll uh, you'll be able to enter as many times as you want I really appreciate how this is just getting better all the time to keep track of your pet, the safety, the technology. It's just awesome now. It is. It's so advanced. Well, we are going to uh, take a quick break. Uh, we should let you know, uh, you can hear a message from our friends at the Woodlands. Their next sale is coming up, I think, this, this weekend, uh, March 11th, uh, down there in Tennessee. Uh, that's where we have five acres of property down there. And we, uh, in fact, we'll be camping there in a couple of weeks, I think, as they continue working on our Michigan home. But uh, uh, so check that out. And when we come back, we're going to meet an RV re inspector who's got some secrets that she has uncovered as she has been inspecting RVs. I think you're going to love our interview with uh, uh, Brenda Puckett. And that's coming up right after this. Tired of overcrowded campgrounds and competing for reservations, paying high fees for sites? Well, ownership is an emerging trend in RVing that might be right for you. It was for Jen and me. We bought some land just west of Nashville, Tennessee in an incredible collection of mountaintop RV properties called the Woodlands at Buffalo River. These are five to 62 acre properties that allow RVs year round starting at $79,900 and we loved it. The scenery is breathtaking and you can own it outright. It's not a timeshare, it's your property, your way. You can landscape, garden, bring your pets, build what you want to. There's high speed internet 
and it's so private. It's a great place to make your home base. No more calling around for reservations, ready whenever you want. And they're selling these properties by appointment, five to 62 acres, $79,900. Financing, big discounts available on multi-lot packages. For information, visit myrvland.com, myrvland.com. Welcome back, and now it's time for our interview of the week, and I know you're going to enjoy this interview. Our guest is Brenda Puckett, and she is a certified RV inspector, a registered RV technician. Uh, she runs a business called Queen Bee RV. It services a bunch of states, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Kansas, but she's been RVing all of her life. It's a member of the National Recreation Vehicle uh, Inspectors Association. She's a much in demand public speaker about RV related technical issues. And uh, we call our segment uh, Secrets from an RV Inspector. And one of the things I think you'll be fascinated with is some of the things that she finds even on new RVs that you would think would be in pristine condition. Very often they're not. And um, I think you're going to love this interview. Her name again, Brenda Puckett. Well, Brenda joins us right now. Brenda, thank you so much for uh, making time for us uh, on this uh, edition of the podcast. I'm excited to be here. Well, let me start off with just just the first question that I think a lot of people have is, what is an RV inspector? We are up, down, all around on that RV. It is incredible. We are definitely inspecting some of those hot ticket items that people are always asking about. They want to know about the roof. Is there water rot? Is there any kind of leaking going on? So we'll look at all of the exteriors, roof, underbelly, that running gear, axles, wheels, tires. We look at all of the exterior, um, uh, so, you know, the sides and the front and rear cap. We'll take on the motorized. Of course, we're going to take a look at that engine. We're looking at we're not, um, we don't do a test drive, but one thing that we can do, uh, we can do a ride along with someone. We can do fluid sampling on those motorized, which is a really nice added benefit to look at generator uh, oil and coolant, engine oil and coolant, coolant, transmission fluids, things like that. And then of course, every single one of the systems, the major um, energy systems like electrical, propane, water, and all of your appliances. I mean, we're all over that thing. What what kind of things are uh, you trained to look for that maybe we would never think of ourselves and that or, or we don't have the expertise, the average buyer to look for? I get a lot of people asking me that they're saying, why can't I just look at that myself or why can't I simply rely on the PDI, that pre-delivery inspection that might be done at a dealership? And here's the deal, first of all. The value is there. We are looking at, let's say, a premier level inspection on a big motorized with fifth wheel. I might look at 500 to 800 points of inspection. I am trained to go dig deep on the electrical systems, both 120 volt and then the, the battery system, the 12 volt. I'm looking at, I have in-depth knowledge of the propane system, water, all of that. So there's a lot of detail that we are, you know, we're digging deep on that. I know how it should be operating. I know the safety features that maybe not all RV owners and buyers are aware of. And more importantly, I've seen a lot out there. Your inspector's probably seen a lot of things that would make your hair stand on end. So we can look for some of these trouble spots that you might not be aware of. Well, that leads obviously to the question, what kind of things have you found that might surprise uh, the, the average buyer? Oh, my goodness. Um, there are, I would say, typical things, and I, and I hate to say typical because every RV is going to be different. Every single one that I've looked at has different problems. Most buyers, uh, RV owners or purchasers, buyers and sellers, are going to be looking at, like I said, that water intrusion. So we spend a lot of time on the roof. That tends to be a place that people are ignoring, That taking a look at all of that sealant up there. And that, that needs to be done frequently. So we're definitely looking there. Um, I have found somebody that had a roof replacement and they were bragging about the roof replacement and they had done some boo-boos while they were up there and they had covered the skylight in the bathroom and because they thought it was too bright in there. So they just covered it up with the new roof membrane. We've seen tears in that roof membrane up there, tears in the underbelly, definitely expiration dates. 
people don't realize there's so many items that could expire that have a life expectancy on the RV, your tires, for example, your uh, DOT, your propane cylinders. There's all kinds of expiration dates, like on those propane uh, detectors, the propane system, the cylinders, the DOT cylinder tanks themselves. So we look at those expiration dates. People don't think about those. I have found, I'm trying to think lately, I found straight from the factory, the OEM um, had miswired the batteries. They, I can't remember if they were wired in series or parallel, but basically they were ignoring the second battery and the load and the ground were all connected to the same battery. So they kept having issues with the battery dying frequently. I've seen aftermarket things added, like we found um, recently at one of our women's RV education events, we found a hot rod, which is an aftermarket electric heating element that was added in place of the drain plug on the water heater. And there's all kinds of risks that could go along with that. Um, we, you know, definitely expiration dates on those tires and just surprising things that people don't know to look for themselves. I, I could go on and on. I, I, I'm amazed at all the things that you, 500 things you say, but what about new RVs? We hear mixed things. When you're buying a brand new RV and they give you this walkthrough, should a customer have and invest in an, in an independent RV inspection? We've been recommending it. Absolutely. And I, I was surprised. I was the same way. I thought the majority of my inspections, once I got certified, would be with uh, individual sellers and pre-owned and that I wouldn't be at a dealership very much. And it's not true. It's about 50-50. And I'm looking at pre-owned plus new. I would say a huge majority of them are new. And it's because the public is becoming more savvy about the RV inspection process itself. They get on the forums, they get on your uh, pages and social media and whatnot, and they understand that this is an option to have a third party look at that. Even though the dealership will say that they're doing a pre-delivery inspection, some dealerships might be looking at 10 items, others might be looking at 100. If you are not familiar with that dealership, it's a great idea to go ahead and get that inspection and to be honest with you, Mike, there's so many issues that just cannot be predicted. It could have been a mistake that happened at the manufacturer level. It could have happened in transport. It could have happened at the dealership itself. There are, are I mean, during a pandemic, there were, I mean, supplies. It was really hard to get all sorts of uh, components and appliances and whatnot. So they were kind of borrowing and... <laughs> and shuffling components and appliances around. You wanna make sure that everything that they're advertising is what is on that new rig. So I think it's very important. How do dealerships react when a customer says, hey, I'm bringing in my own inspector. Uh, are they generally receptive to this now? I know early on when this was fairly new to the industry, there was, there was a lot of pushback customers would tell us. Right. But how about now when you show up and they go, oh boy, <laughs> is it's it causing so... them to maybe do a better job on their PDIs, their <laughs> delivery inspections? I think you're right. I'm, and, and in fact, I'm here at the National Review Training Academy. This is where I got certified. And we talk a lot about that. The new inspectors ask me, am I going to get pushback at the dealership? More and more, those dealerships are familiar with the process. And I tell them, I think they're giving you a clue. If they are open to the process, then that lets you know we're all on the same team. We want to help that customer make an informed, educated decision. So usually they're great and we have good relationships with them. They know that we're coming in. We're not there to squash the deal and cause them heartache and headache. It's definitely there to give their buyer a good experience. And if they're accommodating that that buyer wants to refer business back to that dealership and, you know, refer other people there. So I, I think I do think that more and more that they are are welcoming us and they're getting familiar with it. When I first started, I was the first inspector that showed up on site at many dealerships. They had never dealt with a third party inspector. And every once in a while, I get that pushback and I'm, and I'm not allowed to tell my client. Mm, this is a red flag. I will just tell them you get to decide if you want to insist on it and dig your heels in. I'm your girl. And if not, may the force be with you. <laughs> um, how much does an inspection cost and how long does it usually take? So all of the inspectors are independent business owners and we don't tell them how much they should charge. And you get 
what you pay for. I'm just going to throw that out there. I saw a food truck on our campus last night that says good barbecue ain't cheap and cheap barbecue ain't good. And I thought that is exactly what I think about my services. It could run the gamut from uh, maybe a simple life safety um, kind of check, uh, low end. I won't say low end, but just small, not very many points of inspection could start at $395 all the way up to $2,000 for a premier level diesel pusher with all the bells and whistles. So everything in between there, all the inspectors will have different package pricing. And then they will tell you, and and this is something I'm going to give a tip to your your, uh, viewers and listeners, they will tell you what value they're bringing for that, whatever they are charging. So ask them, ask the inspector if they will send you their points of inspection, if they will talk about, like, for example, our association, we have a code of ethics. We have standards of practice, standards of practice. We'll send you all of our goods so that you know where we're coming from and the professionalism, you know, what level you're getting, the time that it takes. This is the part that's so surprising for both buyers and sellers. I'm a one woman team. So a little teardrop or a bumper pull, I'm still going to be there possibly six or seven hours for a big diesel pusher. It could be eight to 10 hours. Sometimes it might go roll over into the next day. If it is a team of inspectors, like I'll buddy up with another inspector in my area in Oklahoma, we'll, we can knock out one of those big diesel pushers or fifth wheels in the same day. So it is super duper detailed and intricate. And then you get a fabulous report, an interactive digital report with photos and videos to, to cruise through at your leisure. And you'll, you'll get that usually within 24 or 48 hours after. Peace of mind is, I think, what that invests in. That's pretty good. So you mentioned stuff on the roof. Mm-hmm. But what other kind of things have you found for your clients? Let's see. I'm um, trying to think about some of the. Um, oh, I know one. Have, I, uh, you know, miss wires and heaters and yeah. all that stuff. But mm-hmm. but stuff that they would maybe never think of. You know, simple things like. Um, People don't always understand what your converter does. And I we're, we're checking the integrity. They may not even understand that their converter is doing the work for them while they're plugged in. They're doing the work on the 12 on the volt system. Um, they think that their battery is doing all that work. So we'll, we'll be testing those systems. Let me think, oh, I found one um, not too long ago that all of the underbelly was severely rusted. It had been parked someplace where it was just getting a lot of water all the time. And the seller was not aware of it and asked if he could go and purchase a wire brush and some Rust-Oleum and brush it all off and spray paint <laughs> over it before the buyer, who was my client, uh, would see all of that. And that is a big um, no-no. People don't think about this as as simple as like from the factory. Um, maybe all the detectors are not wired or they don't have batteries in them. And you as a new consumer just think that it's all set to go and all your safety device is not ready. Sometimes there's cabinetry that is not fastened to the wall. You know, it might be just hanging by one little uh, screw. The water pump, there'll be plumbing things that are not, you know, completed. And you might, you know, the worst kind of leak is that little slow, small leak. And so we'll find issues like that. The, a big portion of that that inspection, to me, the most important part is the electrical. And we'll get inside that electrical panel bo- box and make sure that everything's wired correctly and that there's not loose connections. These are things that the consumer wouldn't usually think to, to look for. Well, just as, you know, we would certainly get an inspector before we buy a house, second most expensive thing somebody will invest in besides their house. So... It really does make sense. Nobody likes to spend more money, but it, it, I can see that. So uh, how can people find a qualified, a certified RV inspector near them? How do they how do they find them? That is a great question. I, I've asked my clients more and more, how are you finding me? And they're simply Googling RV inspector near me. And luckily, our association has a locator feature on it. So if they head over to nrvia.org, and that stands for National RV Inspectors Association.org, they, we have find an inspector. There's a button at the top. They just click that. And just like any locator feature, they can put in a zip code or a city and find somebody near them. They're going to see master certified and they'll see regular certified inspectors like me. 
you can read their profile and their bio and get all your questions answered, give them a buzz and do a little interview process. It's not a big deal. Brenda Puckett, I wish you were closer to me. I would have had you inspect uh, the RVs that we bought in the last couple of years. Uh, <laughs> I would love that. I fly. I I look forward to meeting <laughs> you in person someday. You're at the National RV Training Academy. Right. And yep. those are our friends down there in Texas. Uh, we Texas, hope to be down there right. and visit. We'll be down and and uh, taking a couple of courses, I think, later this year ourselves. So, Oh, I'm sure I will be here. I can't wait to meet you and Jen. Now, after hearing that, I can see why Brenda is in demand for being a speaker. Yeah. What awesome advice and we, information. Yeah, we will be bringing Brenda back to the podcast. We've got lots of other topics that uh, she can talk about uh, very eloquently and uh, very educationally as well. So uh, it was great to meet Brenda, and uh, we knew that you would enjoy that interview. When we come back, new travel tech. The one thing that can ruin a perfect RV trip is a bad mattress. And believe us, we know. Over the years, we've tried many and found them all wanting. Until now. Now, we sleep on the RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. Quite simply, it's the best we've ever slept on. We chose a queen-size Aurora Lux medium firm mattress, and it arrived tightly rolled in a box all we did is put it on the bed, unroll it, and wait for it to recover from the compression. Oh, does this ever feel comfy? It's so cushiony. Then we put on the sheets and the bed covers, and we found ourselves ready to order another one for our home. That's how comfortable it is. That first night's sleep was luxurious and deep, and it's been like that ever since. The RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding comes with a 120-night sleep trial and a 10-year warranty. Shipping is free. If you're disappointed with the current mattress in your RV, you owe it to yourself to try the RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. Something else that's very important is that Brooklyn Bedding manufactures all their RV mattresses in their own factory in Arizona. This means they're able to use premium materials at a reasonable price for you with no middleman bringing up the costs. And right now, if you visit rvmattress.com slash rvlifestyle, you'll get 20% off your mattress with the code rvlifestyle. Again, use the promo code rvlifestyle for 20% off the cost of the RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. We're sure you'll be as thrilled with your RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding as we are with ours. It really is the most comfortable mattress we've ever slept on. When we're on a road trip, we always seem to find a way to stop at a Camping World Center. There are over 225 Camping World locations across the country, and there's always one close by when we need parts and accessories for our RV or just on a shop. In fact, uh, we have so much fun with uh, Camping World, and as we talk about it as one of our sponsors, they have agreed to offer a 10% discount if you use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you buy $99 or more in merchandise. You'll find everything you want from outdoor furniture and appliances, the ones you see us use in our videos and that we talk about here in the podcast. RV extras that include everything from camping chairs to fire pits, electrical accessories, must-have gadgets. Check them all out. And again, don't forget, use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you visit CampingWorld.com. Of RVs. I mean, all kinds of them. Uh, travel trailers, uh, uh, motorhomes, and even fifth wheels. Uh, and often they disappear. And uh, nobody knows where they are. So it's wonderful that something has been invented called air tags that are out there that you can put a tracking device on your RVs, your cars, anything that moves, anything that doesn't, well, just about anything you can put it on. You can put it on Bo. Yeah, we can put it on <laughs> We can you. put it on Bo, on me. <laughs> uh, now, air tags have been around for a while, but uh, the technology is really amazing. They're shockingly easy and affordable. They're about the size of a large quarter, or maybe if you all remember uh, the older people watching this, the 50 cent piece, remember those? Yeah. Uh, about the size of that, or maybe even a large coat button. Um, but uh, you, they track wherever, wherever their location is, it, it coordinates with your smartphone. Very small device, it can fit anywhere. 
And the thing it, that about it is so neat is that uh, it seamlessly links to a, an app called Find My App on an Apple device like your iPhones. We've been using it ourselves. Yes, we, we have. And uh, so the AirTags, they're simple, the app simple, and it's a, it's a map. You can find out where things are. If things are moving, if they're stationary, yeah. track them down. You just put, it's this, it's that Find My uh, app is a default app that you get on your smartphone, and you can track that location. And it's really amazing. It updates it all the time. So if it's just a matter that you can't find it, you've misplaced it or if something's been stolen you can figure out where it is so that you can tell the police and it's, can find it the accuracy is within a couple of feet they have like um they have the find nearby or they even have precision finding which will get it right there uh it's, it's really neat we have one in all of our vehicles right and the size about the size of a quarter and you can uh, put it in a, a slot in your billfold or purse if you were worried about that or yeah um and we have one in our fifth wheel we right. kind of found a secret place to put it in the fifth mm -hmm. wheel we have one in our our motor home uh we have one in our truck and one in our passenger car and uh it's 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 just really nice we you know nobody's going to find them we kind of hide the location and they're so small um but everybody's going to wonder about the battery life. Battery life, it's easy to replace the batteries and they don't cost that much. It's just those little watch batteries, right. those 2032 yeah. coin so, cell. You know, like, yeah. what, $100? You can get three of them, have them handy. They usually last about a year. Well, that's for the AirTag itself, not the batteries. It's the AirTag itself and the batteries, you know, you can pick up anywhere. But uh, the batteries last a year, like you say. Uh, so we think it's neat. We, we have a link we'll put in the show notes for this episode where you can get a three pack of them um for um 99 bucks and that's pretty neat uh the single one cost uh 29, 29 dollars so uh that's uh that's really a, a, a good bargain um i i can't Money speak well spent. Of it. yeah it is it it, wherever yeah. you're gonna hide it in your vehicle you will want to put a reminder uh to check you know the battery in about a year or so and uh, replace it i'd say just set yourself a reminder at 11 months replace the yeah. value in the air <laughs> exactly. tanks. give a chance of uh, a year a yeah. sooner well thanks to newtraveltech.com for the inspiration for this story you can read a full story on those by the way uh, at uh, uh, newtraveltech.com when we come back the rv news of the week one of the most exciting developments for rvs is happening out west in arizona Western Land and Ranches is selling five-acre high-elevation ranches just off the famous Route 66, the birthplace of the American road trip. Prices start at only $39,900, and these are beautiful, secluded tracts of land surrounded by majestic mountain ranges with sweeping valley views. The high elevation is a unique microclimate as well, giving you cooler temperatures, green grasses, and tree cover, making it unique for desert property. The community is in the center of it all, close to the best of the West, Grand Canyon, Las Vegas, Lake Havasu, Lake Mead, Lake Mojave, the Colorado River, Flagstaff, Sedona, and Historic Williams. If you're tired of crowded RV parks and paying high fees for sites, well, ownership might be right for you. This incredible collection of mountaintop properties called Greenwood Ranches hit the market and it's selling out fast. There is no HOA. You can build a house, a cabin, outbuildings, or just RV. It's your property, your way, 100% ownership. Visit the website to get details and set up a showing, ArizonaRVLand.net. That's ArizonaRVLand.net. Now it's time for RV News of the Week. And Mike, you've got a follow-up to a story that we've been following. Right. We've been following regularly the problem of catalytic converter theft. For those of you who have RV motorhomes, you are a special target to catalytic converter thefts because there's usually more clearance and the thieves can easily sneak under your motorhome and uh, cut that thing out in a shockingly a short amount of time, by the way. Well, I want to give a hats off to Minnesota because uh, they're the latest state trying to do something to stop catalytic converter theft. The Mississippi, the, the uh, Minnesota legislature is drafting a law that will discourage thefts by making it illegal 
for scrap dealers to have a converter that is not attached to a vehicle unless it has a VIN number or some traceable mark. That's been one of the biggest problems because um, it's the scrap dealers that buy these things that create a market for the thieves. Um, under this law in Minnesota, if somebody fa is found with three or more illegal catalytic converters, they would face felony charges, uh, felony criminal charges. Uh, if catalytic converters, if you don't know what they are, they're pollution controlling device. Thieves love them because they have uh, very valuable precious metals within them. And the number of thefts has grown from 3,389 in 2019 to more than 52,000 in 2021. And the stats for 2022 are not in yet. And uh, they've just gone up and up and up. So uh, we'll link on the podcast uh, show notes to a number of stories we've done on this, but uh, uh, people are starting to do something about it. So thank you, Minnesota. It sounds like your plan is something that would be very workable and that would uh, slow this problem down. Yep. Now you had a story about um, this uh, RV sales boom that was there for the last couple of years. I think we've all known that this was inevitable, that yeah. this is going to happen, <laughs> that things can't go up, up, up forever you know, eventually they're going to come back down. And a report prepared for the RV industry is forecasting RV wholesale shipments to be down 32% in 2023 compared to 2022. Now think about it, that's a third. That's almost a third. That is a big drop. It is a big drop. The range they predict is from 324,300 to 344 units in uh, 2022. And uh, the wholesale shipments were 493,000. So that really is a big drop. Uh -huh. And, you know, we all know what's going on. Every, everywhere in the economy, we're feeling this. The drop because of inflation, interest rates, and the slowing economy. Yeah, um, I think they're going to drop as well. I saw a story from Woodall's Camping Magazine that uh, used RV prices are also dropping a lot. Uh, so that's good. Uh, well, here's another story from uh, the National Park Service. Uh, it's just a reminder that the bears are waking up out there in uh, the wilderness. And uh, they did this really weird tweet. They did this thing, never push a slower person down when you're running away from a bear. And I read that and I thought, what? You know, I mean, it's kind of the funny thing. You know, you always say, hey, I don't have to be the fastest person. I just need to be faster than you. So <laughs> yeah. uh, when a bear is chasing. But anyway, they did that and they gotten a lot more attention with it, I guess. But the point of this thing is uh, bears are waking up from hibernation. Uh, they're all a little bit uh, slow and, and uh, they're very hungry. Uh, and uh, un unwittingly, you may run into one if you're out there in the wilderness. So what do you do? Well, I thought it was pretty interesting for the grizzlies that uh, laying down, covering the back of your neck and spreading your legs far apart. So it's not so easy to turn you over and to try to discourage those bears. Yeah, I <laughs> don't want to get in that position at all. But uh, so those grizzlies and those brown bears face down on the ground and spread yourself out. Yeah, don't the be... Don't be too easy to flip. Yeah. Uh, you know, the best thing is to quietly back away. Now, we've run into bears a couple of times on our hikes out there. And uh, usually, fortunately for us, it's been black bears. And it just we just back up and we keep talking. Um, and uh, they say you should fight back if it's a black bear. Um, try but to if it's, make yourself bait. Pull yep. your arms around. Try to discourage them. If it's a gr brown or grizzly, though, you got to play dead. Uh, lay on your stomach, hands on your neck, legs apart, so you're harder to turn over. Um, grizzlies are something else. They're tough. Uh, we've got links to a whole bunch of things about bear safety that you need to know because we've covered a lot of that over the years at uh, rvlifestyle.com. Oh, well. Wow, it's an adventure out there. And don't think you're not going to meet bears because you read about it all the time, people who have bear encounters, and you need to know what to do. So refresh every year. And that's one of the reasons, by the way, they say don't let your dogs run unleashed in wilderness areas because uh, dogs don't like our bears don't like dogs and uh, they will attack your dog. They'll attack you. So 
Don't right. want to get them mad. Learn about bear safety if you're in bear, bear safety. country. Yeah. And now we've got a story from a New York City Council. I thought this was really interesting. Something that I hadn't thought about before. They are considering banning the sale of secondhand e-bike batteries. And you say, what? <laughs> you don't quite understand that. But after a number of fires, injuries, deaths uh, has grown substantially over the last few years. So e-bikes are commonly used to delivery by delivery workers in New York City. And the number of fires from these batteries has grown from 44 in 2020 to 166 uh, through uh, 2022. And these fires are often extremely dangerous, causing injuries, like 147 injuries and uh, six deaths, which you wouldn't think of, last year alone. And so New York City traces the fires to batteries uh, purchased that were used from non-reputable sources. And because e-bikes are so popular in the RV community, we want you to know about this. And uh, we certainly enjoy our e-bikes and don't want anybody trying to slow down the use of e-bikes. So uh, just don't buy used batteries. Yep, used batteries. That's the uh, that's the issue. Uh, well, one last story. Um, this is a follow-up to a very sad story, but the parents whose two children were killed last year, we reported on that, killed when a tree fell on them in the campground, uh, they have launched a campaign to raise awareness of tree safety. Uh, this family is from Indianapolis. They were camping last April at Indian Oaks Campground when strong winds toppled a, a large tree which fell on them while they were driving by in a golf cart. I mean, what are the chances of that? I don't know, but tragically, they had an eight-year-old and a nine-year-old brother and sister, uh, and they died. The parents were also in the cart when this happened as well. Um, so the parents have placed nine billboards around the state of Indiana, urging people to cut down dead tree limbs uh, and notice signs that a tree may be dead. And they're trying to start a little education campaign for it. And the hope is that people will notice the billboards, pay attention to the health of their trees when they're camping or just hanging out in their backyard. You've always considered me a bit paranoid because we, our last house, we had so many trees on, on that property. And I'd be out there saying, it looks like it's dead, time to cut it down. And yeah. it wasn't for the beauty, leave the tree there for the woodpeckers. Trees have got to go. Trees Dead are... branches, cut them down. All right. We'll be right back with the RV questions of the week. When we're asked, what's the most important modification we made to our RV? It's an easy answer. Battleborn batteries. Battleborn batteries are quality, safe, reliable lithium batteries that allow us to stay out there off the grid longer. Lithium batteries charge faster. They charge fuller. They're longer lasting. They're maintenance free. And battle-borne batteries are protected by a 10-year guarantee. Now, in our case, they just dropped into the existing AGM batteries that we have. And it'll probably be the same on your rig, too. Battleborn battery experts can get those in your rig just like they did with ours. They can also match you up with the right cabling, the inverter, the charger, the solar controller, everything. Jennifer and I swear by our battle-borne batteries. They allow us to boondock off the grid. Check them out. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. All right, welcome back. Time now for the RV questions of the week. And we love getting your questions. We love getting your comments. You can send them to us at Mike and Jen at rvlifestyle.com. That's our private email address. All right, the first question comes from somebody named Mike and says, with those um, keypad door locks, those keyless door locks. What happens if the battery goes dead and you left your keys, because they all have a key override, if you left your keys inside the RV? So we suggest that if you're towing, that you would keep an extra key in the tow vehicle. So that is one way to handle that problem. And so just keep an extra spare key where you know where it is so it's, you can get to it. And if it's a motor home with no tow, just find no tow vehicle, just try and find a place to hide it in the motor home. And what we would recommend from Amazon, they're only like $7.99, a three pack there actually of these little tiny magnetic key holders that you can put in a, underneath the RV someplace that only you know, and then you have a key there. 
but uh, that's the best thing to do. Didn't they used to suggest spots where you were supposed to put that magnetic key? And I thought that's not good yeah. to suggest a yeah. spot. Find you your own spot. You got to figure your own spot because every beef is going to yeah. this, like putting the key under your doormat to your house. Yeah, yeah. Just but you know, there's lots of places that, yeah. that you can find. And that's a little harder in some of our fiberglass vehicles. Yes. But if you look under the chassis and reach around under there or into the, I don't want to, we don't give thieves any yeah. suggestion, but there's lots of secret <laughs> places. You have to figure it out. You can do it. And uh, seven ninety nine, but and you can get three of these and you might as well put these keys all over the place. So, all right, one more question. Okay, we got a question from Julie and Julie says, please settle a bet for us. There are three little windows on a road track. Are they real windows? <laughs> what's, what's the history of this? Uh, yeah, well, have you ever noticed when, you, if well, you, you may not have noticed unless you're a road track driver, but if you're riding a road track, you pass people, you'll see people raise up three fingers. That's for the three little windows. And they used to be real windows. And on some of the older Chevy versions of the road track that go back, you know, a decade or so, or even more than that now, um, they were real windows, mm -hmm. but alas, no more. They're decals. Um, with time, they've become stick-on decals that look like windows. Uh, and uh, and that's a sad thing. I think it's good they kept the three little decals because people fell in love. I mean, I think Road Trek was the first to make a Class B, and they had their three distinct little windows, and uh, people wanted to stay with that tradition. And then remember, uh, Pleasure Way came on the scene. Another Canadian Road Trek was a, is made in Canada, and then Pleasure Way came on, and they put two windows. <laughs> so you'll see those. But and I don't know if Pleasure Wheel people, pleasure, you know, give the peace sign when they see somebody, or whether <laughs> it's just the Road Trek with the three fingers, but. At any rate, they're now decals. All right, that is this episode of the podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. And again, we would love to hear from you. Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com is uh, our email. Thanks, guys, so much for watching. Happy trails. Happy trails.